Welcome to this discovery session profiling MyServiceDesk.com, Hornbill's cloud-based ITSM solution. My name is Marcellus Elfrey, Solution Specialist. MyServiceDesk.com is powered by SupportWorks and is available in your choice of free versions, designed to suit your needs. Pro gets you up and running quickly with best practice ITSM processes provided out of the box. Expert allows you to customize the solution to suit your unique requirements. Developer provides ultimate flexibility and customization through access to the application and development environment. All MyServiceDesk.com solutions include 11 ping verified ITIL processes, can be rapidly deployed and are designed to quickly deliver business value. Plus, our highly secure cloud platform and proven availability and performance will give you peace of mind. All this from a very competitive £39 per user per month and with a minimum three month commitment for the pro version. Now let's have a look at the solution. SupportWorks is provided with five applications, one for your administrators, two for your customers, your end users, so they can access and log their own service requests, their own calls via the web portal, and two for your analysts who are mobile on the road. So we've got a mobile client that can be used on any mobile devices and also a web-based client as well. When you first logged into SupportWorks, the first thing you're presented with is a notification page referred to as SupportWorks today. Within this notification page, you are notifying or informing your analysts of what's taking place on your service desk at any given point. The first tab we have looks at your services. So you may have SupportWorks integrated with your network monitoring tool, which monitors your email services or your network services and can trigger events into SupportWorks. SupportWorks will pick up that event, can log an incident or a problem, can send alerts out to appropriate administrators or any other recipients you deem necessary. Through this notification as well, we can drill down into some of these services and see what the overall impact might be on the infrastructure itself. So this example is saying if the email service has gone down, what else is impacted? So I can right click on perhaps the switch and then say show impact and we can see all those other devices are impacted, meaning a lot of your customers will not be able to access the email service. Further through some of these order sections here, we have major incidents which gives you the ability to link several incidents together and work as a parent-child hierarchy. So anytime I put an update on the parent, it's also updating the child incidents. When I resolve the parent incident, the child incidents will also get resolved. Further down the line, once we've been resolving all those incidents, we may decide that we want to go into problem management. So you want to find the root cause of repeatable incidents. You raise a problem, you will notify everybody that a particular problem has been reported. So in this case, we're looking at the Orion ERP application here. What this does is communicates to the service desk analyst that any incidents relating to this problem can simply get linked directly to that problem rather than having this incident being assigned to individual analysts. Once you've investigated that problem and you now know the root cause of the problem, you then raise a known error, again providing information instantly to all your analysts on the service desk. This information is also propagated to the self-service portal as well. So any of your customers, your end users, using a particular configuration item or has been subscribed to a service will automatically get notification relating to that particular configuration item or service. Eventually, you would have found a resolution, you've been testing it, and you now want to deploy that resolution. What you want to do is have a controlled way of deploying that resolution, whether it's upgrading the server or installing new servers. You want to control the deployment process. So you'd raise a change request. Within that change request, you'll create some change activities. 
So you could be doing an impact analysis. So if we make that change, what is the impact on the overall infrastructure? It could be you want to do some testing, you want to do some planning, and then you can populate the schedule calendar with that information. So everybody, uh, all your analysts will get that information so they know on certain days there are different types of change activities being implemented. Next section down is relevant for authorizers. So any of your analysts, any of your experts who are part of your approval process, when they log into SupportWorks, they will get an entry here to say that there is a service request or a change awaiting for them to approve. If the analyst logging into SupportWorks is not part of your approval process, this section will be blank. We then provide you with some dynamic reports, some dashboards here where in particular for team leaders and service delivery managers, they can see at a glance what's happening in terms of how many calls have been escalated, how many calls have breached the SLAs, how many calls are, are currently of the different types that you've got in the system. And each of these are drillable as well, so I can drill down into the various sections and get more details around that particular call. So this is the notification page that all your analysts get as they log into SupportWorks. We then have several sections down the left hand side here and we'll briefly go through some of these. So we've got the dashboard which provides some more management KPIs around dynamic dashboards in terms of in this example we're looking at top 10 analysts logged into systems. We've got request logs in the last seven days. Each of these dashboards are configurable by yourself. So I'm logged in as the administrator, so I have full access to creating those dashboards as I wish. I can drag and drop those, move those dashboards around. Those dashboards can also be created based on roles. So I can give different types of analysts access to different section of the dashboard itself. We then have the service desk area. So the service desk area is where we'll spend most of the time throughout this demo. This is where your analysts spend most of the days um, reassigning calls, logging calls, updating calls, and so on. SupportWorks also ships with an integrated business process, graphical business process engine, so where you can build your, your business process, your workflows, and you can see that graphically. You can also drill down into each of these conditions as well and get some more detail and get some more details around that condition. Next section down is looking at the change calendar. So the change calendar can be viewed monthly, weekly or daily. You can view the different types of changes and any blackout periods that you may have within your infrastructure itself. Okay. We then have various views down here like calendar view, emails, where SupportWorks can get integrated with your corporate mail server. You can pull in emails into SupportWorks and either automatically log calls from those emails and then send notification out to relevant recipients. We then have customer search and there are various other icons down at the bottom to do with things like reporting, social media, uh, and um, some database queries. Okay. Going back up to the service desk, first thing you get to note is on the top, top left hand side where you look at your support team so this is mimicking your infrastructure itself so this is the various teams that you would have uh, on your service desk so here we have first line second line change management facilities finance and HR which means support works is multi-tenant in that I can use it across the business so it's not just about IT I can use it for HR I can use it for facilities and I can use it for finance each of these separate desks when they log in will see information that is relevant only to them so when hr logs in they will only see hr information so the system is completely filtered out so data is not um, corrupted between the different desks okay. on the right hand side we have two sections here the top bit is all about the incidents that have been assigned to me so i've got my incidents my major incidents operational tasks so if i'm working with the different teams that i've got within my department and tasks that are coming out of my automated business process, my workflows such as any change management processes or any service request processes. Down at the bottom, I have types of service requests. So all the requests that customers are saying they would like to have a new PC, a new laptop, or change the details. We've got problems and known errors. We've got changes, we've got release, and we've got a My Watch Calls queue, 
which gives in particular team leaders or service desk managers the ability to monitor certain types of calls. For example, if you've got a customer who is complaining about the service they receive, they're receiving from your service desk, you can monitor the calls being logged for that particular customer. You can see the updates that's been put on those calls and you can act accordingly. This is a permission control tab where you give permission to relevant analysts to allow them to be able to add calls into your watch list. Let's go into start logging calls in SupportWorks. So if we click on this icon up here, we can log an incident, we can log a problem, we can log a change, we can log a release, and we can log a service request. Now we can do each one of these individually as the need arise, but what I want to do is just go through a, show you a linear process where we can raise an incident. And after we've done some investigation and updating of this incident, we can raise a problem from that incident and go through a problem management process. Then from that, we can then raise a change. So this is where we're starting to go into deployment and trying to resolve a particular problem permanently. Okay, And then from there, I will go into the self-service and show you how your end users can actually raise their own support calls and raise their own service requests. So clicking on the incident form, all the information you see on this form here will be pulled from your configuration database. So SupportWorks is fully integrated with Active Directory or any external source where there's a SAP system that holds any information about your users, about configuration items that you want to import into SupportWorks. So here we've populated Anna is phoning up the service desk. We've put in Anna's details in here. So her custom ID and it's populated the incident form with details from Anna's um, record. So here we have what we try to do here is to provide sort of like a human touch. So your service desk and your end users feel like they know each other. So you're trying to deliver as good a service as possible to your end users. So we have the number of calls currently open for that customer for Anna. We've got an assessment level for Anna. In this case, it's saying she's non-technical. And what that translates to is saying, well, if I need Anna to do something that is technical for me, such as Anna's phone in says she cannot access the network and I want her to ping that network, I have to describe the steps to tell Anna exactly how to ping that network. Yeah, I do not assume that she knows. All the useful assessments in here is not just about a technical ability, but also about some health issues. Then you might think putting things like whether they are colorblind, whether they're hearing impaired, so that will help your analysts to address the customer accordingly. And then the customer feels like they're getting a personal service. Okay. On the right hand side, it's picking up your SLAs and your priorities, the impact and urgency as you've configured against Anna's record. We can then profile that incident. So we categorize in the type of call. So it makes the reporting easier for us later on. So we go and categorize this as um, a software and then say Anna is having some issues with access, for example, and click on OK. What then do is fires off a script. So the analyst is going to ask Anna some specific questions around what kind of issue is she having with access. Okay. And as Anna is repeating and relaying the kind of issues she's having, I can then type it in. So I'll put this here. Now, once we finish that, support works will copy that into the details of that incident. We can then summarize that particular call. We can then pick the CI, so we can then pick the configuration item that Anna is using to access um, access. So in this case here, we've got her PC, so we can pick the PC. Notice as soon as I selected that PC, it's also showing me in the information bar for that incident, there are potential problems and known errors that could match that incident we're about to log. 
So uh, the analyst logging the call have the option of going and let's find a solution to that. They can either search the knowledge base for existing resolution or they can look at open problems and known errors and they can link that particular incident to a problem if any exists. Okay. So we're going to log that call for Anna now. So we've got various login options on here. So I'm just going to log and assign it so I can assign it to a group or I can assign it to an individual analyst. When I select an analyst and I assign that call to them, that particular analyst will receive an email to say a call has been assigned to them. If I then assign the call to a group, everybody in the group will receive an email to say a call has been assigned to that group. Okay. So I'm going to assign the call to Daniel. Because the customer is on the phone, I can give them the reference number straight away. And if I want to give them any information around the SLAs, I can do so. I have the opportunity to send them an email as well. So I'm going to OK that. So this is the email. It's pulling the content from that incident form. So it's sending a description back to the user saying, this is what you've logged with us. This is your reference number. So when you communicate with us, use that reference number. These are the SLAs and the date and time we intend to resolve that issue. This email is completely configurable. So you can put in your own color schemes and your own logo onto this email. Okay. Also, opening back up the incident form, the email that I've just sent is also attached to that incident record as well. So it keeps a complete record of communi email communication between the service desk and the end user. Okay. Next, once this call has been assigned to the analyst, the analyst will then go through various actions. So these actions are the life cycle of that particular call. So they'll accept the call. So they'll accept, the, accept that call. Again, they can send an email out to the customer again if they wish to, but I'm not going to send that. So the analyst will accept the call. The analysts have all the actions they can carry out so they can reassign the call if they need to. They can update the call. They can place the call on hold and they can resolve the call or they can cancel it if they choose to. Okay. So these are the actions that the analyst will carry on as they progress in that call through its life cycle. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is let's say we get to the point where we've added enough information against this incident, but now we want to actually start investigating why this is keeps happening. So we want to investigate this incident, make sure that we can resolve it per permanently. So we go into actions here and we can raise a problem. As you can see, we can also raise a change, a service request directly from that incident. So I'm going to raise a problem from that incident. This has the effect of copying the incident details onto the problem record. It also has the effect of linking that incident to the problem as well. I do have the ability to add as many incidents. So I can use the search button here and add as many incidents to that problem as we see fit. Okay. Now I'm going to put in an SLA for that particular problem. I do have the ability to add a business process as well if I want to, so I manage this through a workflow. I then need to associate the device that's actually causing that particular issue itself. So I can go and search and I can add a particular device here. So I'm going to select the, this particular server and say that's the, the device causing the, the, the problem that we're going to investigate. Okay. Again, log and assign this, but I'll just do a log and accept here. So I need to profile this. Yeah, I'm not going to send the email again because it's the same, but I'm going to open the problem record back out just to show you that the fields are contained within that problem record. So we have the impact assessment here. So Supportworks is looking at the relationship between the configuration item associated to that problem. And it's saying there is an issue, a switch has a direct relationship with that particular server. So when we're doing our impact analysis, when we're doing our resolution, we need to take into consideration the potential impact of whatever changes we make affecting that switch as well or any other CIs relating to that configuration item that we're changing. Okay. Supportworks is also doing some background information as well as looking at any incidents link here so it's also providing you with number of 
organizations potentially impacted and number of customers impacted as well. So as you link incidents to the problem, it will populate this box. If the configuration item is being used by different organizations, it will then populate that information as well. So it's saving you time having to go and look around your infrastructure and find out who else is impacted by this particular problem in the case when you need to actually deploy your resolution. Okay. So as per the incident, we have same life cycle for accepting, assigning, updating, placing call on hold and cancelling that particular call. So eventually your analyst, you would have found a resolution. So whether it's a workaround, so you can come in here and we can say install install patch on the server. That now gives us the ability to pu publish this particular problem as a known error. So I can click on publish as known error. Then gives you the ability to say, do you want that resolution to be copied onto all the incidents that's currently linked to that problem. Also, do you want to inform every incident owner? So every analyst currently working on an incident that is relating to this problem can get a notification to say, this is the resolution for resolving that particular incident. Just going to save that form. And this is just telling me that this particular problem is now converted to a known error. I can then publish this onto SupportWorks Today page by clicking that box, or I can also publish it on self service. So I can inform every single customer who has an incident associated to that particular known error as well. Okay. Next thing we want to do is say, well, we spent some time, we've investigated this problem, we know what the cause of this problem is, we've run some tests, we now have a resolution. In order for us to deploy this resolution, we need to raise a change request so we can control how this resolution is deployed into our infrastructure. So I'm going to go to the actions again and then raise a change request. At this point, just want to draw your attention to the fact that you can also publish that known error to your knowledge base because perhaps you would have spent three months, six months doing some nice work on testing and coming up with different um, alternatives for this particular um, known error and coming up with other issues as well. So you want to publish that into your knowledge base so that when your analysts are logging incidents, they can search the knowledge base and provide first time fixes as well. Okay. I'm going to raise the change from that known error. That now has the effect again, copying all the details from the known error to the change. It also disassociate the known error and copy it onto and link it to a separate tab. It disassociates the incidents from the known error and also link it to the change record as well. So what it's doing is bringing everything to the front because this is a critical point now where your CAB members may need to review everything that's been done before they actually authorize that particular change. Okay. Support works workflow and business process that controls runs across all the ITIL processes that we mentioned earlier on gives you the ability to manage the fields on the forms as well. So at certain points within my change process, I can say now I need to have a backout plan. So I'll enforce people to enter backout information before they can move the change request along. So I can make fields mandatory on the form. And mandatory fields are represented with the red triangle in the top left hand corner here. So just to demonstrate that we can see this process, if I select my process, if I select emergency change, nothing happens to the required by field. But if I select an item change request, you can see that field is now mandatory. So we've got a very powerful and flexible workflow engine that allows you to manage and manipulate the fields on your change forms. Okay. The other thing we need to look at is the configuration item that we need to change. Do we need to associate any more items with this particular change? Do we need to associate any more services with this change? Okay. Now, if we build the relationship cor correctly within our infrastructure, support works will pull all that information from the CMDB for you. So you wouldn't have to go on and associate these individually yourself. Okay. So I'm just going to log and accept that change. Open that change up. So the first thing to draw your attention to is 
Now our workflow has kicked in now. So we're looking at the first part of that workflow is to classify that change. So your change coordinators will review the change request and determine whether that change request is a major change, uh, a minor change or significant change. And depending on what they've selected, if I select major change, that will send my change to in a different direction. So in this case here, it's now saying this change need to go to a cab. Okay, so these people were on a cab are Keith, Rosemary, and Sean. You can see the stage now saying cab review and authorization is required. Now this change cannot progress any further until the cab has actually reviewed and approved that change appropriately. Okay. In terms of the authorization, each one will receive an email accordingly and they can then send back that email to say yes to the change or no. Um, we reject the change. We balance out the authorization process by using a waiting. So you've got Keith, who is the IT director, for example, and Rosemary is shown as subject experts, and they need to have an input in that. So at least Keith and either Rosemary or Sean need to authorize that particular change. Okay. What I want to do now is just go quickly to the self service to show you the service request itself. So we logged into the self service, and I'm going to log in as Anna and this is a self service completely configurable by yourselves and um, you can put in your own color schemes your own logos on here Anna can review all her requests so she can see all the calls that she's logged with you she can update all those calls so she can go and update all those calls she can provide you with feedback around her experience against this particular call with your service desk at this particular point Anna can then go and raise different types of requests she has um, a lot of IT services, applications, and so on. So she can either raise a support call against a, a, a particular item that she works with, or she can raise a service request and say, I need a laptop or I want a new piece of equipment. Let's take, for example, that she wants to raise a support call against MS Office. So she clicks on support me. If she goes to Outlook and click on next, she can select the item she's having an issue with. If she goes to back, select Excel, for example, and go next, she can actually then say, well, it's formatting. You have a link to your knowledge base and you say, well, have you looked at this particular knowledge base document itself? So you can publish documents through the SupportWorks knowledge base and you can get your end users to actually follow through a script and review and hopefully help themselves with resolving their particular call. So saving your analysts on the service desk a bit of time uh, and they can spend more time actually doing some incident reviews and problem management and so on. We then have all the types of requests in here. For you can see here, we've got a combined self-service that Anna can access all her requests, whether it's facilities, financial or human resources. So if Anna needs to raise, for example, a new starter, she's got somebody new starting in the business, she can click on raise new request. She can put in the name of the person who is the new starter. And fill in some details around that person here. We've also given Anna the cost of this as well. She can see the cost of the service she's raising. She can go next, fill in some extra details here. So a lot of these are mandatory fills. Some of these are optional fills. Some of these are picked up from the database directly. So click on next. She can pick up the items that she want the service desk or the support to actually provide to that new starter. She can decide how quickly she wants this to be implemented. We have a standard delivery. This is similar to Amazon type where you get standard five day delivery, but if you want it quicker, you have these options here. Um, click on next. It gives her a review of what she, she's just bought. So she can review her shopping basket before she then submits it. Then once Anna is submitted that, this is now sitting within support work. So if I go and search that particular call, here is that request sitting within support box itself. Okay. So Anna, back on the self service, can keep an eye on her, her own call so she can review this call herself. Her manager will get an email to say he needs to, um, there's a call that Anna has just raised a new request and he needs to go and authorize that particular request itself. So if I quickly log out as Anna on here, go back into self service into the client 
So this is the request Anna has just logged. This is all the information she, she selected on the self service. You can see the first thing it's saying that her manager, Steve Robinson, now needs to authorize that particular request itself. So Steve would receive an email and he would either send back the email to say, yes, you can authorize it, this can be done, or he can go on to self-service and he can actually authorize that particular um, request via the self-service itself. Thank you very much.